and welcome to my channel and if you're new here my name is Millie and today I'm going to be doing a little bit different kind of video than from what you're usually used to seeing and this video has been done by Amy Loves Makeup and Angelica Nyquist I will link their videos down below make sure you check those videos up and subscribe to them as well they have some amazing content but they decided to team up and do kind of like a dear makeup indie brands things that indie brands are doing that they could improve on or things that they aren't doing and they should be doing. And I've been wanting to do a video like this since last year. I have written down notes in my phone and actually I found, thank God, because I just can't remember everything, but there's definitely stuff that has been on my mind since that time. But I was too afraid to make a video because I thought people would be like, oh, like, what are your credentials? Like, you don't know what you're talking about. And I was also um, a little less comfortable on camera back then, so I just didn't feel like it was the right time to do it and I just kept putting it off and just kind of adding onto the list. So now I'm finally going to do the video. So mine's not going to be like five things. I'm just kind of going to let it all come out. I think like an onslaught of just thoughts, I guess you could say. But before I really get into anything, I just wanted to give you my background. I am a graphic designer, so I work at a design agency or studio. It's kind of both and we have graphic designers and product designers and so i have quite a bit of experience with working with newer brands established brands really big brands but also startups and a lot of definitely like independently started companies so definitely have a lot of experience on the branding packaging advertising stuff and i work also with a lot of people that are very experienced in brand positioning brand voice and things like that, just basically completely building a brand from scratch and how to set yourself apart from others and not just like graphically and the way that your brand looks. So of course a lot of things for me are going to have to do with like graphics and branding and logos and I could honestly just make a video about that. Editing Millie here, I will actually not be talking about branding or packaging or logos or any kind of design, but I'm going to talk about the consumer side. So we're going to talk about things that are a little bit more personal to uh, my experiences from my job and then things just as a consumer as a whole and then like kind of merging those two together Just what I think that these indie makeup brands could improve on in general So I kind of have an order, but I think some of these kind of merge into each other and So the first thing that I wanted to start out with is that I see a lot of indie brands that don't really repost people who use their products and they don't repost eye looks or full face looks or anything they just really like to post swatches either that they've done themselves or that other people have done and i just feel like people want to see how the products are used more than they're swatched like swatches only can tell you so much especially because a lot of times the swatches are either over primer or they're built up like you don't really know exactly so while swatches are really nice to look at, like I want to see people using them. That's how you sell a product is I want to see the potential of this eyeshadow palette and what kind of looks I can create. I just get really frustrated when I go to a brand page and I just keep scrolling and it's just swatches and swatches and then like a little bit of sprinkled in people here and there. But it's just like this is about your product and I'm more likely to trust you when I see other people using your products. So you might have like so many people that have tagged you in their looks and why aren't you reposting that? Like it just doesn't make sense to me from a selling standpoint whatsoever. And that kind of brings me to another point which is that I wish that uh, brands would send PR a little earlier just like larger brands and I know that's something that might be a little restrictive because indie brands obviously don't have such a big budget but I'm not saying you need to send it like to a ton of people but I would love to get a the kind of taste of the looks I could create with a palette before it's fully launched so I enjoy when for example ABH sends out PR ahead of time so I see a lot of people using it and by the time it launches I see the kind of looks that I could create or kind of the variations and just it gives me a really good idea on if I would want to purchase the product or not so I think that's something that indie brands could really utilize because I think that's really helpful you know how many times do we have to go off of one arm swatch before a launch like I think that's ridiculous but of course we still buy the products including me off of one swatch but I just don't think that's really acceptable going forward in 2020 so my next point kind of talks about PR a little further and I just think that PR and swatches and all that kind of stuff 
should always be included in a budget no matter what like if you don't have arm swatches on different skin tones in a budget don't watch a brand like you can't just leave out different skin tones like i just think that should be really included in any kind of budget before anybody launches a brand or even a product like before you launch a palette and you know how much the packaging is going to cost you how much the eyeshadows are going to cost you etc you know packaging design whatever you need to include the price of photography of swatches of PR like it needs to be included we now live in a world where PR is super common and everybody does it and I see brands that I've worked with that calculate that into their budgets because they know how important it is nowadays to send out PR I'm not saying you need to be like sending it out to like the huge youtubers with millions of subscribers but it's really important from a selling standpoint I think any brands just need to see it as a possible return on investment and which is how larger brands see it and as long as you're sending it to people you know are interested in your products like why wouldn't you want that like you could possibly have a huge return on that and again it's 2020 i see zero excuse for not having different skin tone swatches there's literally a million ways you can try and even if you're on a tight budget like there's ways to do it not everybody is charging thousands of dollars for arm swatches and i think brands forget that it just makes them look like they cater to only a specific demographic and I can't imagine how di discouraging that must be to anybody who is left out from these watches. And I think some brands have been getting a little better at it but I just really want everybody to get on board. And my next point is kind of a merge of customer service and also um, just being active on your social media. Social media is so important to a business right now and i know there's still people that just don't understand social media maybe the brand owner is the only person behind the instagram account and so it might seem overwhelming it's something that i found absolutely frustrating and there's a specific brand that has done this recently but i'm not going to mention names and they are not active on instagram unless they have something to release and it's just like you're so lucky that you have this established you know customer base that will always buy whatever you have to release without you having to like go and post and interact and be an active brand but you can't rely on that forever like you need to bring in new customers and how are new customers going to come in if you're only advertising each new release and you're not posting in between like that almost makes it seem like a little sketchy and it makes me as a consumer just think like do you even care and i understand that brand owners are busy and they might not necessarily have the time to be on instagram even just daily but that's kind of where you know you have the possibility of hiring somebody to go on your social media and i'm not saying they may need to be like hired full time and going on instagram for you like constantly but just somebody else that will throw a post up you know two three times a day or less or whatever you want but at least there's some kind of interaction and things happening and also there's some brand owners that just cannot handle criticism and that's also when it's handy to have somebody else that is also taking care of your account because then they will not have that personal connection and also that really helps with the customer service like it's always nice to have somebody professional respond to you in the comments or the dms or whatever i understand that there's a lot of emotional connection because it's your brand and you don't want to see people unhappy or criticizing whatever is wrong with the product and and that that's when you get defensive i definitely think i would be the same way if i had a brand because you can get in some really really hot water if you're the one responding and you're heated and you're taking things personally like it's really not personal and at the end of the day it's makeup and everybody will have a completely different experience it's just everybody's so different everybody's techniques everybody's skin you know what products they're using and things like that and i think that at the end of the day the brand owner needs to realize that this is a business and customers always come first always okay just please be nice to your customers <laughs> or else and the last point that i wanted to make is actually an experience that i've had probably at least two times with different indie brands and that's product testing i think that indie brands skip on the product testing and of course i don't know like behind the scenes maybe they are doing but 
I've had an experience where I got I received a product that I knew was was less than perfect. I spent money on it, you know, I bought a couple of, of them. And then like a month later, I don't remember exactly, they restocked and they were like, new formula. Okay, so like, what do, what do we do with the bad formula? Like you had to reformulate it, therefore you know that there was something wrong with it. Like, that's not how that works when you're already selling products. Like, I don't wanna waste my money on products that are less than perfect. And I think everybody is more or less accepting to really it's a personal choice, but I'm not really that accepting. I just think that it's my hard earned money. So I don't have time for you to figure out a formula over the course of a year and is selling less than perfect product. So it's really about how long did these people test these products before putting them out into the market. And that's something that's like kind of a gray area with indie brands in general, because you don't know if it's been tested like, you know, regular makeup with a large makeup brands that have launches that they plan a year ahead and editing Millie here again i just wanted to clear up what i mean by user testing i mean how people experience the formula so for example how it blends how it applies is it pigmented does it build on each other is it powdery in the pan There's, is there a lot of kick up things like that and also has the longevity of the eyeshadow in the pan been tested in terms of how long it lasts before degrading or before or before rusting or any kind of issues like that. So I think indie brands should be sending out their products to trustworthy people that they know, whether that's professional makeup artists or content creators or whatever, that try out their products for you know a couple months. And that could be eyeliners, that could be eyeshadow formulas especially, and just giving them feedback so that they can improve and so that what they are selling is you know the the most refined version of that because there is nothing more unnerving than an indie brand telling you oh yeah i'm still working on perfecting the pigment to filler ratio or whatever like i don't i don't want to hear that i don't want to spend my money on that to be honest that's really common with indie brands and it is a risk that you are willing to take but I feel like there's definitely some really trustworthy indie brands out there that I know they must be testing and, and they've been around long enough so I'm usually mostly skeptical of some like really fresh new brands that are hand pressing products or hand mixing products and I really try to be as understanding as I can because I, I know it must be hard when you're running your own brand and you're doing the formulations and you know you're also having to deal with not having thousands and thousands of dollars, but I really think that's something else that should be included in a budget. And so those are kind of my thoughts from my notes and just things I have been thinking about as I'm observing different indie brands and their feeds and how they interact with people. And I'm sure there's gonna be other things that will pop into my head after I post this video, but too late, maybe I'll do like a part two or something. And definitely make sure you check out Angelica's and Amy's video because they have some really great points that I strongly agree with and I didn't wanna kind of mention and just repeat what they were saying. So make sure you check out those. I think it's just really interesting to watch as a consumer. I think you kind of realize some things and you agree. And I also think it helps you to think about things that you wish any brands would improve on or do more of or whatever. So check those links down below in the description box. And that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.